let's say that you're solving a problem associated with hypothesis testing. And let's say that the null hypothesis is that the mean is 50. And that for the alternative hypothesis, let's say someone believes that the mean is not 50 and decides to conduct a test. How do you know if the null hypothesis should be rejected or not rejected? For this example, we need a two-tell test. The area shaded in blue is known as the rejection region. The area that is not shaded is the fail to reject region. Now the Z values that separate these two regions, these are the critical values. Now let's say if we're dealing with a 95% confidence level, you could use the standard Z table to get the Z values. So at a 95% confidence level, the critical values will be 1.96 on both sides. Now, in order to know whether you should accept or reject the null hypothesis, you need to get another Z value, a calculated Z value, and compare it to your critical value. Let's call that calculated Z value ZC. Let's say if ZC is to the right of Z, then that means that you should reject the null hypothesis. If ZC is to the left of Z, that is, if it's in the fail to reject region, you shouldn't reject the null hypothesis. You should keep it. So now let's talk about how we can calculate ZC. So this is known as the test statistic. So first, so let's talk about if we have a population mean versus a population proportion. Now, sometimes we may need to use the t-distribution. Other times, we need to use the normal distribution and get the z-value. So let's say that the sample size is less than 30 and that the population standard deviation is unknown. So if these two conditions are met, in that case, we need to use the t distribution. So our t value is going to be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of n, where n is the sample size. Now, let's say that n is less than 30, but we know the population standard deviation. In this case, we could use a normal distribution. So we're going to calculate the z-value. So our calculated z-value is going to be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation, that is the population standard deviation, over the square root of n. Now, let's say that n is greater than 30 and the population standard deviation is unknown. Because the sample size is large, the distribution will be similar to a normal distribution. So once again, we can calculate the z value. So it's going to be the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. Now, if n is large and if we know the population standard deviation, everything is going to be the same. Instead of using s, we're going to use sigma. So those are the formulas in which we can calculate the z value or our t value and compare it to the critical value in order to determine whether we should reject the null hypothesis or if we should not reject it. So this is when you have, when you're dealing with the population mean. Now sometimes you can be dealing with the population proportion. 
And so that's going to be P instead of mu. In this case, we're going to use a different formula to calculate Z. And so the formula is it's going to be the sample proportion minus the population proportion divided by the square root of PQ over N. Now, N is still inside the square root. Q is 1 minus P. So just keep that in mind. So that's the formula we need to use if we're dealing with a proportion. That's how we can get our calculated Z value. So those are the test statistics that we need to be using when solving problems associated with hypothesis testing.